Welcome back, everybody. We're here with another episode. They seem to be very successful on critiquing your designs. I really enjoy doing them. I can remember when I was in your spot needing as much advice as I could. Glad to be spending some of the time doing these. We're bringing them out about once a month. I'd like to fit in more. Time is tight, but as many as I can do, I will be doing. And in this episode, we're gonna be critiquing three designs. Hopefully one of yours is one of these. Keep giving me your feedback and I'll keep giving you the critiques. Now, the first one today is gonna to be from Alfonso Ferreras. Pretty good from the beginning, from the first impression for 16 year old design. You've got some new things happening on here. I'm glad to see that level of thinking that you're thinking about the future, about electrics. And based on that, let's get into what your design contributes or adds to the world of electric vehicles. So judging on that from a proportion point of view, it looks very interesting. I would say that for a four seater, comfortable four seater sedan, it probably is a little bit tight in terms of wheelbase. When you design a sedan, think three and a half wheels distance between the front and the back. In other words, how far to space the wheels when you first start your sketch. Now, I would almost guarantee you're running around three and I think three and a half, like I said, is the better one. So start by planning your first wheel, lightly put in your second, your third. So for a four seater sedan, I would tend to go to three and a half wheels between the main wheels for your wheelbase. So stretch that last wheel out a little bit further on your wheelbase. And now we're looking at about the right proportion for a comfortable four seater sedan. You have an extremely short overhang in the front that might be your intention, but what it does mean is that there's no plan view or very little plan view to the front of the vehicle. It means it goes out slightly from the front wheel and then straight across. So the proportions are interesting that you have the base of your, of your windscreen almost directly over the center of your center of your front wheel. But what I see here as a problem is that your A pillar and the center line of your windscreen come almost to a point. Again, that means you have no curvature in the top of the windscreen. It would just be a straight line straight through the vehicle. That is not good. You want to have curvature in the glass if only for good aerodynamics. You don't show an A pillar, which means that the A pillar is perhaps behind the glass. That's a nice thing. Like architecture, a lot of times the modern architecture will not show the structure on the outside of the building, but rather instead have the supports, the pillars, everything behind the glass. It gives it a very modern feeling. So good for you on doing that. Then you have a nice sloping roof line, perfect. A nice line, shoulder line that goes through the body. It has a lot of that bow to it. It gives it tension. So that's also very nicely done on your sketch here. You've gone dark just below the, the feature line here, which is great because it's rolling underneath, catching less light. And that means that the volume is actually wrapping underneath the car. I can see that very nicely how you're doing that here. Again, by stretching the wheelbase, it means that your door shut line could be a lot easier, a lot more flowing than what you have with this zigzag. Your rear end is very interesting. It's chopped off. Now what you probably want to do here, show the wheels on the other side of the vehicle just to give you that feeling of vanishing points working behind the vehicle. That will give the car a feeling that it's in perspective. So darken this up like you've got through here. Then another factor I would do here is you've got what we call a horizon line, horizon reflection through the glass. Now, you've carried it all the way to the front of the windscreen, to the center of the windscreen in the front, and you've stopped it at the rear here. Remember that you can sort of start from this point here where the base of the uh, A-pillar is at, and you can usually come back into the C-pillar area, give it a nice bit of curvature like that, play around with it, be very, very loose with it, so in that respect, you're starting to get a view on the side of the car that really represents uh, the proportion, the actual shape of the car. And the car has a lot of character, Alfonso. I like it, it's new, it's fresh. You can do it, it's electric, so you can have a lot more packaging space in, inside the vehicle between here 
in here so you're able to fit more people in or let's say put them in more comfortably that's a good thing with an electric package thanks so much alfonso for submitting this again a lot of courage when you're that young to send something in that you know is going to get ripped apart i haven't really ripped it apart but again doesn't need to be ripped apart just needs to be taken up a few notches and then you'll have something almost professional and probably able to get you into a university with it in your portfolio. Cheers. Next up is Fazil Hanafi. Fazil is 21 years old. He's from Uttar Pradesh, India. Hello, Fazil. Whoa, Fasil, you've used a ruler. Whenever you're doing something in design, you have to start out loose. In other words, plant your elbow and just try doing this all the time, just like that. And you'll be uh, amazed how beautiful your lines can start to become. You're doing curvatures. Once you can do curvatures like that, start to weight the front of the line and, and, and you get faster lines. In other words, the curvature is not consistent, it curves more at the beginning and straightens out slightly as it gets to the rear. Those are accelerated lines. Your side view, it looks a bit, I'm a big fan of Lego, I like Lego, I love Lego. It's a bit Lego-ish. There's very little line flow. So this design here, as I look at it, it's gonna take me all day to look at it from here to here because there's so much happening, so many different elements, so many, movements of line that that interrupt the flow of my vision so as i go up i go back i go down i go back i go up i go back down and you want something that flows and not to say that you can't have breaks and lines obviously you can but this is almost like a maze in terms of how many lines you've got going in different directions so what i'm saying here fazil is to start making from the front curvature to your design the windscreen the roof, the big problem with having very flat lines is that when you go from a flat line to reality, that flat line in reality will never look straight. In fact, it will always look hollow. So a flat line doesn't look like it's got any tension to it. It will start to sag, visually sag, not scientifically or mathematically, but visually you will have no tension in that line. And so it will look like that. So add some weight, add some curvature, pump it up a little bit, and you'll go away from that, 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 I don't know how to explain it, it just looks like the air got sapped out of it. You've got something strange going on here with the bumpers sort of falling off the vehicle. Maybe it's after the accident, but I don't think you would design the car like that. You need to go in the right direction, which is that way. Your front door, interesting to have it sort of like that and down like that and in like that but it's not very practical from an opening point of view because when you open a door that is basically on a slant like that you're gonna have trouble with the hinges so to make it open properly so what you want to do is typically the front where you will have the hinges keep it more or less vertical the rear one obviously because it's not attached to the hinges you can sort of do that if it's a four door like you have here you probably tend to flatten out the rear line of the front door a little bit more too. The rear one, you try to bring it back as much as possible to keep enough open space to get into the back seat. So that's good. Now again, moving to the rear and the front view, like I said, orthographic views are fine if you want to design a car like that. It's a good starting progress to try to make the car look like the same car in all views. So it's a good practice. Um, it's a very industrial way, less designery way of showing the car. The next stage obviously will be to put the car into perspective, which is a lot more difficult. We'll be coming out with a course soon that will show you how to draw in perspective cars that you first establish like you have here. But that's, a, that's another thing that we'll talk about. Your drawing is good, but like I said, it's a mechanical drawing. It's not a designer drawing. Everything is too precise, too exact, and too defined. Good on you for doing the drawings here. Just like I said, last message, loosen up, Fossil. Oh. 
next one for today is from Zai Hansda. Zai is not expecting this, and so Zai, hello. I know the intensity that you have put into communicating to me about please reviewing your designs. And I'm not picking out Zai just because he's been persistent. Obviously persistence is better than resistance, but I'm looking at his design from the point of view, okay, I will review it because there's a lot to critique about it that a lot of you will probably get some benefit from. Getting into his drawing, Zai, um, congratulations on being persistent. It does pay off. Zai, has designed a futuristic GTO. Now I think he's talking about a Ferrari-esque type GTO. If it is, it doesn't really look like a, like a Ferrari, Zai. It's a bit over the top. At the same time, I can understand you being young and wanting to do something that sets a new direction for Ferrari. There's a good amount of creativity within your design, a new fresh direction, let's call it. When I look at your sketch, Zai, my first impression is that you've sent me three different cars. And that's okay. I've always said that designers never draw the same car twice. If we get into the top sketch, you've gone to a lot of trouble. We call it a worm's eye view. So that's very unnormal for a human being. As designers, we're not limited to drawing cars from the eye height of a typical viewer. We can exaggerate the proportions. We can exaggerate the viewing angles to give it a little bit of interestingness. It's not a machine that's drawing the car, it's you, and you can choose whatever angle you want. It's just, for me, a little bit complicated what you've designed here. It's, it's a mishmash, and I don't like that word. It's maybe a potpourri if you want to be more sensitive with the words, but for line flow, for carrying a single theme through the vehicle that is consistent from, from the back, this is a zero out of 10. Not trying to criticize you from a hard point of view that way, but there is no consistency of the design from front to back. It's interesting in every little aspect, but in terms of car design, you will not have this car in your memory, say 50 years from now, because it's not communicating a single message. And with design, communicate one message one clear message and you will be doing the right thing. So like I said, try to calm it down. Give it a bit of Xanax or whatever you need, but calm that design down. And when you get to the rear of the car, your rear view is like I said, it's a different car. It says eat dust B I T C. We're not gonna say that word, but you have a car that is super aggressive in the back. I love your diffuser where you have that dramatic change in, in height from the bottom of the car up to the base of the, uh, the number plate where you have that very dramatic action going on on the diffuser, very aggressive. I bet that works really well. Lights, very dramatic. I don't think on a typical track day car you're gonna need such dramatic tail lights. Fat wheels always look good. They're aggressive. They work very well on a performance car. It's a concept, obviously. Wheels like that, you probably would never ever see in production. You've got what we call in the design world rubber band tires. So basically it's a rubber band stretched over a wheel. Your profile is probably only a, about a 10 or a 15 on here, which is good for sketching, but remember in production, it's gonna be a hard ride. So let's move down, Zai, to the next view, which is your typical side view of a vehicle. Now this looks not too bad. You've got things going on here that are fairly accurate. The least accurate thing you have here, Zai, is your ground clearance. Now this can really ruin your drawing if you have a professional looking at it who's trying to understand what you're trying to communicate. You need to be realistic in certain ways and what happens here is it communicates directly, immediately, that it's not a professional sketch. As in the previous drawing, you need to sort out your ramp angles, so get something going on here that reflects the, the idea behind it, as well as in the rear, get some lift up there. I mean, the car is sitting on the road, basically. Get it up in the air. I know it looks nice sitting on the, on the ground. We tend to like very low cars, but in that respect, you have to be realistic that the car, even though you can lift it, we have lifters and things for speed bumps, get it looking at least realistic in that sense. That will help quite a bit. I like the way you have your fender line. It's probably slightly off. I tend to try to put at least the front center line of the fender directly over 
the center line of the wheel. In other words, the highest point of the fender is typically right directly over the center line of the front wheel. So get it right around in there like that. Same way with the rear. If you go down the center line, vertical center line of the wheel, that's typically the high point of the rear fender. Everything else drops away from there. You can at times, if you want to give it a little bit of a shove to the front, it's to slightly move it forward, the high point of the rear fender off the center line. That gives it a little bit of that oomph shove movement to it. So what I would never do on the rear is to put it behind the high point of the rear fender, behind the center line of the wheel. That, that does tend to make it look a little bit um, wrong. Your shut lines on the door, Zai, are interesting. If you're gonna do a shut line that is basically tilted like that, so dramatically front and rear, be interesting to see what kind of concept you have. If it's a Koenigsegg type style door, if it's a Goldwing type door, if it's a dihedral type door, if it's a suicide type door. Very interesting to see what you have thought about on the door opening concept. All in all, I think your best view on here is the worm's eye view, as I mentioned before, just because it's so dramatic, but definitely get that design calmed down so that it's one language, one theme runs equally from front to back and you don't bring in so many different elements of design. Your rear one is exciting to look at as a track car. Get the lines right, get the proportions right, and after that, it's a piece of cake to a walk in the park to get it to look absolutely professional. Good deal. Thanks, Zay. So that's a wrap for this episode. There's a lot to critique and it's very hard to compress it in such a short time. But I think it's a great uh, lesson for those who are starting out to sketch. We're always trying to introduce different levels of sketching so that everybody gets a little bit, but it's a lot funner to critique or try to, to suggest improvements to a very younger generation who are just starting to get into it because Let's face it, if you start out on the wrong foot, it's gonna be hard once you learn uh, the, you know, to break bad habits. So let's try to get everybody working from a very young age with good habits, with knowledge, and with uh, some advice that we can actually use uh, productively on your sketches to bring it to another level. So I hope you've learned a little bit. I've enjoyed talking about your designs and let me know in your comments below, what are your questions? What do you want me to specifically address, be it? line quality, be it perspective, be it shading. Good on you guys, thanks very much. Leave your comments below, like I said, let me know, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.